Hello. Today's topic is on management of patients with urinary disorders. First is urinary tract infections. UTI is infection or inflammation at any site in the urinary tract. Normally, the entire urinary tract above the urethra is sterile. The most common infectious agent is Escherichia coli, or in other words, E. coli. The persons at highest risk for acquiring UTIs are as follows. Diabetic patients, females due to a shorter urethra, pregnant women, obstructed urine flow due to the calculi, structures in the urinary tract, bladder tumors, BPH or benign prostatic hyperplasia, urinary retention, incomplete bladder emptying after and after instrumentation that is urinary catheter and cystoscopy. Immunosuppressed patients and older women with bladder prolapse are also at high risk. Diagnosis is done by clean cats midstream urine collection for culture and sensitivity to identify the specific organism and the antibiotics they are sensitive to. The other tests done are intravenous pilogram, IVP or, or cystoscopy. UTI is considered is categorized into the upper and lower UTI. The lower UTI refers to the infection in the bladder and the structures below the bladder. Upper UTI refers to the structures above the bladder, namely the ureters and the kidneys. Cystitis or inflammation of the bladder, prostatitis or inflammation of the prostate gland, and urethritis, inflammation of the urethra are lower UTI and acute and chronic pyelonephritis and renal abscesses or upper UTI. Some of the contributing factors include bacteria gaining access to the bladder. For infection to occur, the bacteria attach to and colonize the epithelium of the urinary tract and avoids getting washed out with voiding due to the presence of the urinary catheter. UTIs can also result from fecal organisms from the perineum getting into the urethra and the bladder, especially when the perineum is wiped from back to front after a bowel moment. Bacteria can enter the urinary tract by ascending infection through the bloodstream or by means of a fistula from the intestine. Abnormal refluxes can cause obstruction to free-flowing urine. The two refluxes, the urethrovesicle and urethrovesicle, reflexes introduces bacteria laden urine from the urethra into the bladder and from the bladder to the ureters. Ure Urethrovesical reflux. With coughing, sneezing and straining, the bladder pressure rises, which may force the urine from the bladder into the urethra. The picture A shows when bladder pressure returns to normal, the urine flows back to the bladder. B, which introduces bacteria from the urethra to the bladder. Urethrovesicle reflux. With failure of the urethrovesicle valve, urine moves up the ureters during voiding and flows into the bladder when voiding stops. This prevents complete emptying of the bladder. It also leads to urinary stasis and contamination of the ureters with bacteria-laden urine. Older patients are prone to acquire UTI due to frequent use of antimicrobial agents, immuno, immuno, immunocompromise, immobility, and incomplete emptying of the bladder. Obstructed flow of urine due to BPH, neoplasm, decreased effectiveness of the prostatic secretions, that protect men from bacterial colonization of the urethra and the bladder. Older patients have decreased thirst reflex that prevents them from drinking adequate water, which also contributes to UTI. Nursing management. Monitor for signs of infection that include fever, chills, leukocytosis. Monitor for urinary frequency, urgency, dysuria, nocturia, burning micturation, suprapubic or pelvic pain, and hematuria. Upper UTI is usually associated with fever, chills, and flank pain or costovertebral pain. 
Complications of UTI include upper UTI, chronic pyelonephritis, formation of renal calculi or renal stones, sepsis, and end-stage kidney disease. Older patients may present with incontinence and delirium. Administer antibiotics specific to the infectious agent. It is important to keep the blood level of the antibiotic constant, and so antibiotics must be taken on time and doses must not be skipped. Encourage fluid intake of 3000 ml per day. Maintain strict intake and output. Administer mild analgesics like phenazopyridine or acetaminophen. Encourage client to void every two to three hours. Patient teaching must include taking medications exactly as prescribed, consuming oral fluids up to three liters per day, which must include water and fruit juices. Avoid citrus, fruit, uh, citrus juices, avoid bu bubble baths, tub baths, and feminine hygiene sprays. Cleanse from front to back after toileting for girls. Avoid urinary tract irritants like alcohol, sodas, coffee, tea, citrus juices, and spices. Void immediately after intercourse, for women especially. Void every two to three hours during the day. Wear cotton undergarments and loose clothing to help decrease perineal moisture. Practice good hand washing techniques. Recurrent infections can be avoided by acidifying the urine with cranberry juice or 1000 milligram of vitamin C. Next, pyelonephritis. Acute or chronic infection of one or both kidneys is, called, is pyelonephritis. Acute pyelonephritis usually leads to renal abscess, which can ultimately lead to glomerular nephritis. Chronic pyelonephritis may eventually result in scarring and non-functioning kidneys and is a cause for acute or chronic kidney disease needing renal replacement therapy. The causes for pyelonephritis include ascending infection from the bladder or systemic infection from the bloodstream. Clinical manifestations include chills, fever, tachypnea, leukocytosis, bacteria, pyuria, frequency, dysuria, low back pain, flank pain, costal vertebral tenderness, nausea, vomiting, headache, and malaise. Urine is cloudy, blood-tinged, or malodorous. Complications include acute kidney injury sepsis, dehydration, and chronic kidney disease. Management of upper UTI or pyelonephritis include encouraging rest until the symptoms subside, monitor vital signs frequently, monitor intake and output accurately, administer IV fluids, monitor the lungs for crackles, assess weight daily, encourage fluids in fluid intake up to 3 liters per day, avoid urinary irritants like cola, coffee, tea, citric juices, alcohol and spices. Please note that citric juices like lemon juice and orange juice are, cons are um, your bladder irritants or urinary irritants. Provide comfort with warm moist compresses to flank area. Medications like antimicrobials, urinary antiseptics, analgesics and antiemetics may be given. Monitor for complications including dehydration, sepsis, now observe for edema, AKI, and CKD. Next, glomerular nephritis. These are diseases that destroy the glomerulus of the kidney and is a common cause of end-stage kidney disease. Most often, it follows pharyngeal or skin infections with group A beta hemolytic streptococcus, that is strep throat and impedigo, staphylococcus, viral infection, including upper respiratory tract infection, mums, varicella zoster, hepatitis B virus, and HIV, and autoimmune processes or other causes. Sometimes antigens outside the body, like medications, can initiate the process, resulting in the formation of the anti antigen-antibody complexes. Antigen-antibody complexes form during primary infection and become trapped within the glomerulus, producing an inflammatory response that damages the glomeruli and leads to loss of renal function. Acute 
form occurs two to three weeks after infection. Chronic phase follows the acute phase or develops over time, leading to chronic kidney disease. Early clinical manifestations may be mild with pharyngitis, fever, malaise, weakness, and fatigue. Subsequently, patients complain of anorexia, nausea, vomiting, lethargy, headache, flank pain, edema, hematuria, proteinuria, azotemia, which is retention of nitrogen in space in blood, hypertension, elevated blood urea nitrogen, and serum creatinine. Urine is described as smoky, brown, coffee or cola colored urine due to RBCs in the urine. Lab test reveals increased levels of serum creatinine levels. Older patients have complaints of circulatory overload, confusion and seizures. Treatment, plasmapheresis, dialysis, fluid and protein restrictions, antimicrobial treatments, immunosuppressants like corticosteroids, managing the hypertension and proteinuria. Penicillin is a drug of choice for streptococcal infection. Dietary protein, sodium and water is restricted when the patient has edema, hypertension, and CHF. Client teaching includes limit, limiting activity during the acute phase, fluid and diet restrictions, and avoiding the nephrotoxic drugs.